college student in Kenya had an idea. He was a pretty good chess player and he needed some cash. So he grabbed a burqa, signed up as a woman in the national chess tournament, didn't say a word to anyone as he was playing, and started winning. It wasn't until he beat some top national players that the league actually investigated and threw him out. His success as a woman begs the question, are men really that much better at competitive chess? However you look at it, the answer is yes. Men simply dominate the game. There's never been a female world chess champion, and the best rated female today is ranked number 124 overall. In the last 50 years, only three women have cracked into the top 100 best players. So the question is why? There's no strength involved. Women score virtually identically as men on intelligence tests. So what's going on? There's a number of explanations that you can put into two general camps. Acceptable, safe ideas, and the ones that get you fired or called a sex. So let's start with the safest one. It's society's fault. Call it sexism or expectations. It's undeniable that for much of history, boys generally got more encouragement to play the game. Are you sure you want to do this? It helped create a literal boys club that can be unwelcoming and intimidating to girls with few role models. We don't have a women's section. But even now, with separate male and female competitions and affirmative action type programs, a whole lot more men play the game, especially at a high level. That smaller pool of women players definitely affects the number of great women players who've made it to the top. It's simple math. But that doesn't answer everything by a long shot. One psychological factor that may be relevant is something called the stereotype threat. Think of it as the opposite of fake it till you make it. It's the concept that some people may buy into their own negative stereotypes, which then actually hurts their performance. In fact, one study showed that women competed relatively worse against equally ranked men than against other women. That said, the data on this one is pretty thin. Now we start getting into more dangerous territory by looking not at society, but at women themselves. Shit. Talking about this is exactly what cost the jobs of Harvard's president, as well as a Google engineer. So first, let's talk about women's temperament. Maybe women are discouraged from playing chess, or maybe they just don't dig it. I don't want to set it up. Even when playing video games, studies show that women gravitate towards more cooperative games, while men often choose violent or more aggressive ones. We also know that men and women rank differently on personality tests, generally higher in agreeableness and lower in aggressiveness. It may not look that way, but chess is an aggressive mental combat. If that's not in your personality, you won't go far. Another thing that may divide men and women is something called spatial reasoning, the ability to work with visual information, like reading a map, or assembling furniture. There are some studies that show men do better here, but a lot of scientists turn kind of wimpy when it comes to this, rightly thinking and knowing they might get punished for even solid science that's unpopular. So it's really difficult to say exactly what's going on there. But the last and most intriguing explanation is something called the male variability hypothesis. It was first noted by biologist Charles Darwin, who wrote that physical body parts of men all around the world virtually always had a larger range of variation than women. Scientists soon discovered the concept also applied to mental abilities like IQ and math skills. It doesn't mean that men are higher in those areas than women. What it means is they're more likely to be found at the very high end or the very low end of the spectrum. Here's some sample distribution curves. The average numbers for the green curve and the blue curve are actually identical. But if we're looking at the extremes, it explains why you would find one group overrepresented. Men are more likely to be at both the low end and the high end of intelligence and math skills. And that's exactly where you're going to find any top chess player. It's actually a similar pattern that we see with things like aggressiveness and disagreeableness. The differences overall between men and women are relatively small, but the most aggressive and the most disagreeable people are usually men, which is why they make up over 90% of the prison inmates. So which of those is the right answer? Probably all of them to some extent. The interplay between biology and environment is debated in nearly every aspect of human behavior, and it's fascinating when people aren't too scared to talk about it. And that's the real takeaway here. If we're not allowed to ask and answer sensitive questions without fear, we can't solve our tough problems. Not problems like chess, but things like racial inequality, child mortality rates, or what drives crime. Truth is more important than popularity or even the potential to offend. We need to dig for that more and more, even when it's dangerous. Come back again for more.